Well, let's right now bring in for his first exclusive interview, Navy SEAL Operations Chief Eddie Gallagher, his wife Andrea, and attorney Tim Parlator. Thank you all for joining us this morning. A much happier group with some certainty in front of you this morning, I have no doubt. Eddie, I want to I want to start with you. Uh, for so long, Americans have seen your picture. Uh, they know your story, but they haven't heard from you. Eddie, as, as a decorated Navy SEAL now found, found not guilty, what is your message to America this morning? Um, <clears throat> I just want to say uh, that I'm, I feel completely grateful and, and uh, blessed uh, to have the support that I had this whole time from the, uh, from the country and from um, all the troops. Um, around you know around the country and I want to say thank you to you Fox News to you guys Pete uh, for being with us from day one um, you guys backed us from the beginning um, <clears throat> and I, I want to especially want to say thank you to uh, Congressman Duncan Hunter and Congressman Ralph Norman and also to uh, President Trump for uh, intervening when he did he did. People uh, will remind our audience that <clears throat> when you were in certain confinement, President Trump stepped in, uh, made sure you were released before your trial with an opportunity to prepare. You know, when I, when I was preparing to, to talk to you guys this morning, so many of the articles say this is a war crimes trial. You're, you've been, you've been uh, called a war criminal. Did that frame you, Eddie, as a bad guy from the beginning? And how, how have you tried to overcome that? Um, yeah, I mean, I believe... You know, they tried to frame me as a, uh, a criminal from the get-go, um, but, you know, we knew the truth the whole time. Um, we, we knew we were, I was innocent of these charges the whole time, and uh, I overcame it by having my uh, strong wife with me the whole time and uh, my legal team. <clears throat> Eddie, you've been, you've been just... Me. Absolutely, and we're going to get to, to Andrea and Tim for sure. Eddie, I want to stick with you for a second. You've been described... As a demanding chief, pu pushing young seals, some would say too far. They would they they felt like, uh, in some cases, pretty rare for some seals to testify uh, against someone they served with. But you overcame that. Just talk to us about that accusation of some of the guys you served with. Um, can you, can you say that again? I'm no, sorry. No, just uh, the, your fellow seals, some of which testified against you, or originally brought charges. How do you manage the perception that that's n not something that often happens? No. Uh, uh, there's a little bit of a problem with the audio. Yeah, but, sorry. Um, <laughs> we can't hear you're not that. hearing I mean, that? I mean, that, that's always been a problem. Yeah, I, mean, I think that what you're asking about is overcoming the issue of his fellow SEALs and yeah. members of his platoon being the ones that testified against him. And, you know, that, that's always been a problem for us. And, you know, we had to make sure that we showed the jury not only that the story wasn't true, but also to explain to them why they would have the motivation to do this. Yes. Because you know, the SEAL, t SEAL teams are a famously close brotherhood, and yet uh, what you see today is with a lot of these teams, there's a certain uh, generation of SEALs that don't really fit into that uh, traditional notion of brotherhood. Uh, there was, you know, d during certain periods of time when they relaxed standards and had a large influx of people into the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they they weren't up to Eddie Gallagher's standards. So that caused some friction and they, uh, they decided to do something that I'm sure that they now regret. Absolutely. In, in fact, I'll yeah, stay on that. Um, Go ahead, Eddie. And I just want to make, make clear that this, uh, <clears throat> this small group of SEALs that decided to uh, concoct this story um, in no way, shape, or form represent the, com the community that I've you know, loved and uh, gave my soul to. So um, this has put a... Uh, a black eye on the uh, this community, um, but I want the nation to know that this is not what our community is about. Um, this community is full of elite warriors that I've been honored and blessed to work with for the past 20 years, um, and I, I thank everybody uh, that's still serving this community. Um, well, and and, you know. and we thank you. Uh, <clears throat> another name that came up, speaking of seals, is Corey Scott, <clears throat> the medic who admitted on the stand. Um, to ultimately expiring that ISIS fighter. Did you know that he would say that, Eddie? I'll let you answer that, Tim. Uh, you know, it, it was something that I, I suspected, you know, based on some of our preliminary investigations and, uh, and interviews before the trial. Um, you know, he never 
came out and told us beforehand. Uh, he, he did use the word asphyxiate, and then he wouldn't, um, wouldn't expand on it. And mm. So it wasn't really until the middle of trial during his direct examination when the prosecutor asked him, you know, what happened next, and he said, I stayed with him till he asphyxiated. And, you know, the prosecutor went completely over his head, but at that moment I punched Eddie in the leg and I said, we got him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just I felt right then that if I went into it, he would admit <clears throat> to it, and, and sure enough, he Eddie, did. What did. Eddie, what did that moment feel like right there in the courtroom? Um, it was uh, it was shocking, um, but you know this uh, this whole thing has been shocking. So at that yeah. at that point, uh, you know no, nothing was surprising me. Uh, you know I think uh, Tim said it from the get go. You know every day there's there's something new. Um, Ex, you know, expect the unexpected. Yeah. So, a Andrea, you have been by Eddie's side this entire time, going through this ordeal. Uh, your your reaction to this verdict, walking out of that courtroom as a free couple. Um, it was <clears throat> definitely a very surreal moment to finally have um, what I ultimately envisioned, uh, if justice was to be served, uh, would happen. So that was a huge moment for us, and just to see that um, now everyone in the country is able to see what we've seen all along, which is my husband is a hero, uh, our family was terrorized, and we've overcome it, and we're better because of it, because we went into this and we gave everything, myself, my brother-in-law, our legal team, and, and my husband especially. Um, so. We overcame this, and we're going to continue to make sure that this does not happen again to warriors in this country. I mean, <clears throat> not to mention 19 years of service, eight overseas deployments. You also have mm -hmm. kids. Talk to us, uh, Eddie and Andrea, about your children. How are they doing pulling through this? How do you explain this to them as well? Uh, the, yeah. Well, it's, it's unexplainable. I mean, to... To have uh, a person like my husband that's dedicated since he's a teenager his entire adult life to fighting the war on terror, um, two decades of service, every single battlefront, every single enemy of the United States. Um, you know, our children grew up with FaceTiming their father, um, having him gone either working up or deploying to the most dangerous battle zones in the country. And then at the height of his career, after being awarded number one chief, number one platoon, He's then, you know, just almost discarded and thrown away. It, it, it's just incomprehensible what our children have had to face, um, what they'd had to go through, how they'd had to see their father in jail. Um, they were separated him most of his life because of his dedication to service in this country, and then to be separated from him because he served nearly 10 months in some form of confinement before his day in court. Uh, it's just, it's really hard to put words to, and our children are resilient. Our children are amazing, amazing individuals, and, you know, we're just thankful to have them home, and we're looking uh, forward to making up lost time. You know, Eddie, you've worn the uniform, as I mentioned, for 19 years, deployed. You stared down ISIS on the battlefield, did things that people can't even imagine. Um, would you do it all over again, knowing what's been done to you in this process? I would, Pete. I wouldn't give back my uh, the 20 years that I've done. I've been able to serve with uh, some of the most honorable men. Um, um, you know, I've, I've had to watch my friends be buried in the ground. Um, no, I I wouldn't give back my, my my past 20 years for anything, and I would do it again, and I would continue to do it if I could. Eddie, we're, it's ironic. Your Freedom Day is America's Freedom Day. Pretty close. Uh, what what are your plans for the fourth? I mean, generally, what's next? I'm sure you were in a tunnel focused on, you know, proving your innocence. What comes next for you? Um, <clears throat> next is just uh, spending as much time as I can with my family and friends and all the uh, people that supported me. You know, I plan on just doing what every American should be doing on the 4th of July, uh, barbecuing, having beers, and watching the fireworks. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan, uh, for sure. Tim, <laughs> Tim, the trial isn't technically over. Just briefly update our audience. What could come next? There's one, one charge still pending. How does this close out? Sure. He was convicted of a single charge, which was uh, taking a photo with the dead terrorist. Uh, even though the entire platoon was in the photo, the only person that was charged with that 
it was Eddie Gallagher. So we have sentencing on that later this morning, uh, and we're hopeful that that will all work out just fine. I mean, the maximum sentence on that is, uh, well, he's already served more than two and a half times the amount of the sentence that they could possibly give him. So um, it, it's somewhat anticlimactic, if you will, but we're going to go through that later today. And you know, it is still a serious issue because it could affect his retirement. Uh, and so we want to get that done. And then hopefully by the end of today, this will all be behind us. And we can go, you know, go talk to Naval Special Warfare Group 1 about you know, what, what happens next, where, mm -hmm. does, uh, where does he go, and how do we transition from here. And you know, then get him, get him into his new, new normal life. <laughs> <laughs> a new normal e Eddie what's your message briefly to future Navy SEALs guys who would wear that trident who would go do the things you've done um, are, are we giving them rules of engagement are we empowering them the way we need to to go defeat our enemies um, I have to say that, so on rules of engagement, I'm not going to speak on uh, rules of engagement or anything that overseas. Um, sure. I'm going to leave that to the uh, people that are fighting the fight over there. And, you know, the rules of engagement are there. Um, but I would say to future uh, Navy SEALs, you know, um, loyalty is a, uh, is a trait that seems to be lost. Um, and I would say bring that back. Um, you're part of a brotherhood. Remember, you know. You're there to watch your brother's back. He's there to watch your back. Mm -hmm. um, and just stay loyal. Loyalty and honesty. And honesty. Mm -hmm. a Andrea, you've, you've been a, a powerful voice in this, as well as Eddie's brother, Sean. Uh, and Andrea, what is, you talk about the next step, the next chapter, helping folks like, what have you learned, helping folks like your husband, what have you learned in this process that you hope to, to do to, you know, wake Americans up to this challenge of warfighters being thrown under the bus? Yeah, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of work to be done. I've always said that, you know, we've seen behind a curtain that we honestly never knew existed in this system. Um, we've compared this and called this a travesty of justice. Um, I still firmly believe that God called us to this so that we could help and affect change for countless, countless service members who have been uh, basically done a huge disservice by this system. So, you know, we're going to definitely close this chapter, uh, take some time together, and then we're going to continue to fight for the warriors of this country and make sure that we're keeping America great and that um, we're not betraying our war heroes after they go to fight for us, and we need to fight for them, and that's what we're going to keep doing. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for getting up early this morning in San Diego. I know you still have to head to court this morning. Tim, you, you still got some on your docket. I just want to thank uh, you, Andrea and Eddie, uh, for your commitment to this nation. Eddie, for your service to your country uh, and the opportunity to have that next chapter. You have uh, stood strong amidst a lot of powerful forces. Thank you all for joining us on Fox & Friends this morning. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Thank Take you. Care, guys. Thank you.